Hi, in this two-part series, I'll show you how to use Alex Barthel's utility Little Nav Map in conjunction with Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020. In part one, I'll cover the process for downloading and installing the utility as well as an overview of the application's user interface. In part two, we'll cover the basics of creating, saving, and loading a flight plan. The application is developed by Alexander Barthel, a German software engineer. Alex describes this as a free open source flight planner navigation tool moving map airport search and airport information system for Flight Simulator X, Prepare 3D, and X-Plane, and now for FS2020 as well. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful. The application has been around since 2016, where it originally supported Microsoft's Flight Simulator 10 and Lockheed Martin's Prepare 3D Flight Simulator package, and it's up to release version 2.4.5 as of the creation of this video. Alex has added support for FS2020 in his current beta release, Alex also provides excellent support for the application and provides email contact information on his site. A huge shout out to Alex Barthel here for all of his work on this application now for over four years, constantly adding features and refining the utility. It's clear an insane amount of work has been done here by Alex. On behalf of the simming community, I offer a huge tip of the hat to you for your efforts, sir. If you use the application and find it enhances your experience with Flight Simulator, please consider making a donation to Alex for his work here. He's not some monolithic corporation making tons of money, but rather a single passionate developer offering this software to the community at large for free. There's a link on his Git page, which is linked in the description. Version 2.6.0 Beta of Little Nav Map introduced support for Flight Simulator 2020. It's up to version 2.6.4 Beta, and that's the version we're going to be using in this video. Note that this is beta software, and you may experience issues with it. Check the known issues notes for the release, and if your issue isn't listed there, make sure to report any issues to Alex so that he can address them in the release version of the application. Currently, the standard arrival routes, or STARS, and the standard instrument departure routes, or SIDS, are not functional in Little Nav Map for FS2020. Alex reports that this is due to a deficiency in the documentation of the API for FS2020. I hope this gets resolved before I put up part two as these are critical elements for the creation of flight plans. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to the little nav map webpage. Clicking on it will redirect you to the Git page for the project where you'll find links to the current beta version as well as the last stable release a link to Alex's profile and his email address as well. Before we install and run the app, we'll need an adjunct utility to allow the application to properly connect to FS2020 called SimConnect. This is linked in the description as well. It's also authored by Alex. Download it from the little nav map page here. Open the zip file. Extract the installer simconnect.msi. Then run it, and that's it. There's nothing more you need to do with SimConnect. You can forget it even exists once it's installed. Back at the little nav map page is a link to the 2.6.4 beta version, so click on that to be taken to its page. Under Direct Download, you'll see a link for Windows, and that's the version that we want. Alex also offers versions for the Mac and Linux as well. As a side note, you can run Little Nav Map on a separate computer on your network and connect to the sim remotely. If these videos do well, I'll do a follow-up episode to cover these features as well as using the built-in web server inside of the app. If you're running a previous version of Little Nav Map, you'll need to remove it in its entirety so that you don't end up with any conflicts. Since the application makes no changes to your system, registry or otherwise, you don't need to uninstall it. 
Just delete the folder that contains the application and its support files. Be sure to read about the known issues and important notes on the lower portion of the page where you download the application. Once downloaded, unzip the file to a location on your system of your choosing. For this demonstration, I'll use my desktop. Now that I have the app on my system, I open its folder and I find the app and I'll pin it to my taskbar to make it simple to find. Now we'll launch FS2020 and get a plane ready for departure and then we'll run up a little nav map. I tap the Windows key to get my taskbar and launch little nav map. The application will warn us about elevation data and advise us to download the globe elevation data from the NOAA. Once in the application, it will warn us again, so we'll go to the settings screen and we're right at the spot we need to be to resolve this error. First, I'll set a path to where I want the elevation data stored, and in this case, I'll create a folder inside of little NavMaps folder like this to hold the data. Then it advises us to get all of the tiles in one zip file and put its contents into our new folder. So I go to the NOAA website via the provided link and download the all-in-one zip file. Once downloaded, I open the zip file and put its contents into the globe folder that we created earlier. Now I can see it's not recognizing the files we just added to the folder, so I click on Browse once again and it's already in the correct location, so I click OK. Now we can see that the application sees the data and it's happy. Once in the application, the UI can look a bit daunting with all of the windows and tool icons, but we'll break it down into pieces to make it easy to understand. Alex is clearly an organized designer and has organized the UI into logical groups. I won't go through every UI element here, just some of the more significant items. You can explore the rest at your leisure. Let's start by simplifying the UI a little bit. I'll turn off a bunch of the map display features and turn off some of the windows and finally turn off the airspace overlays. Now we have a much simplified version of the UI to deal with and we can easily look at it without all of that clutter. We'll use this medium sized general aviation airport here in the Los Angeles area for our demonstration purposes. This is the Van Nuys airport. We'll look at this in detail in a moment. Let's flip over to the sim and tell it to start our flight so that we have an aircraft on the map that's in sync with the sim. Switch to FS2020. I already have the flight ready, so I just need to click on fly. Here's our flight at the hole before we taxi to the runway. With ATC clearance granted, it's taxiing over to the runway for departure. I'll hit the Windows key to get to my taskbar and switch back to little nav map like so. And we can see that we have an aircraft and it's taxiing to the runway as expected so we know we're correctly connected to the sim. Now it's showing a trail of the path that the aircraft has taken by clicking on this button here in the toolbar. Looking at the map, we see we have a simple compass rosette at the upper right. Below that, we have some navigation controls for the map. And these move the map, or you can click and drag. This one zooms it in and out, or you can use the mouse's wheel to do the same thing. While it looks like an intimidating number of buttons up here, they're all logically grouped and we'll have a look at the most relevant ones for our demonstration here. This first group here is for loading and saving and starting new flight plans. You can draw on the map and these allow you to show and hide your markings on the map. This one would center our flight plan on the map if we had one. This one attempts to keep your aircraft centered on the map. If I was over this way, I could click on this and get back to my aircraft in the center here. This one turns the aircraft path trail on and off that we just used when the aircraft was taxiing. The next one will clear any highlights on the map that you may have created. The next one moves the map back to its previous location, so it'll take me back to the spot I was at before I centered on the aircraft like so. I can click on the center on aircraft again and get back. The next set of three buttons controls the amount of detail shown on the map. 
The plus shows more. This one resets it to the default amount of detail. And this last one here reduces the detail. Let's zoom out and have a look at these. As I click on reduce detail, you can see more and more of the detail markers across the map are getting removed. If we click on the plus button, we can add them back like so. If we continue to click on the plus, we add even more details back in, such as these smaller airports. If I click minus, they're taken off, as you can see. We'll keep adding detail, and if you look here at LAX, we can now see details such as elevation, ATIS frequency, and contact tower frequency, along with the airport name. Now it adds in the detail markers for the airfields. We can hover over these and get a detailed information about the airfield. Click it again and we get runway numbers. The LAX ones are a bit crowded over there. Or we can go back to the default level of detail and that's what we'll do here. These buttons will show us our different types of airstrips on the map. The first one is for add-on airports. I don't have any, so it's not going to do anything for us on the map here. The next button shows or hides airfields with hard runways on them. The next one reveals or hides soft and water runway airports on the map, which might include grass airstrips, non-paved. This last one shows empty airfields. We can see one right over here. Moving back in close to the Van Nuys Airport again, I know there's a VOR transmitter at the end of the runway in this field over here. Zooming out a little, I can click the Reveal VOR button here, and we can now see that there is indeed a VOR right where I said. This next button shows our non-directional beacon stations on the map. I need to zoom out since there's none near the Van Nuys Airport here, but you can see them on the map over here and here, for example. The next button shows waypoints on the map that we can include in flight plans that we create or import. There are about a zillion of them in this area, as you can see. Next up is our ILS glide path indicators. I'll get in close to Van Nuys here and turn this on and we can see that the ILS glide path for 16 right is here. And below us we can see the ILS glide path for the Burbank Airport runway 80. The next two show us our airways with the first one showing the low altitude Victor airways and next to that we enable the high altitude jet airways. Since you can draw on the maps and add things like measurement indicators, etc., the next two buttons allow you to control the display of those items. If we had a flight plan to find, clicking here would show its path on the map. This one would show us missed approach legs, very nice feature. This one shows the aircraft that were flying on the map. And following that is a button to show a path indicator to show us where our aircraft has been as you saw when it taxied. Next to that is a compass heading indicator that will center on our aircraft. It has a heading indicator up here and shows our different bearings around the edge of the compass. This orange plane here turns off and on the display of AI, multiplayer, or real aircraft in the map. You can see I have airport AI traffic on and it's got a bunch of AI aircraft parked at the ramps here in Van Nuys. I can click on any of them and get information on that particular aircraft if I like. This group of controls are your flight plan tools and we'll get into those in detail in the follow-up video to this one. I hope they're all working by the time I do the follow-up video since this is still in beta and not everything is quite working right yet due to some SDK issues that Alex is having. These buttons here control the various panels or windows that you can open and close. We'll wrap up our examination of the UI with a look at some of these windows and how you can customize them as well. The first of these allows you to maximize the map window and hide all of the docking windows. I'll open up some of the dock windows to show you here. Open the flight plan window, the floating flight plan calculator, the info window, the search window, the elevation window, the aircraft window. I'll close the floating windows for this demo. 
Now I can click on the Maximize Map window and it hides all of the other windows and gives us a nice full screen unobstructed view of the map. To restore the display back, go to the Menu's Window option and in that menu you can see we have the full screen map option here and we just need to click on it and it restores all of the windows back as they were. One final element here to look at in the toolbar is this set of icons that allows us to view our various airspaces in the map. I'll turn off the docking windows for this. Then we click on the Show All Airspaces button here. It takes a moment to render the airspaces. I'm, I'm not sure if it's getting the data live from online sources, but it takes it a second to show it. As I zoom out, you can now see all of the different airspaces around the Los Angeles area here. If I hover over any of the airspaces, it gives me a pop-up detailing that airspace region and its color coding. I thought this was a very nice touch. You can also control which airspaces get displayed in the map. Overall, it's a very flexible set of tools. The gear icon on the right side here gives quick access to the application's options system and there are a ton of options. Make sure to check them out. One final aspect of the UI that I wanted to cover is how the dock windows work. I'll open up the flight plan window, info window, search window, plan elevation window, aircraft detail window. Oh, wait, I closed it. Let me reopen that. I wanted to cover the legend window as well, since we've got it open here. This is super helpful. It's not only a legend window, but it also shows a number of keyboard shortcuts like these. As we scroll down, we can see it delineates every possible symbol on our maps, typically using the same standard symbols that you would find on a JEP chart or on a regular sectional. Alex has done a really excellent job with this. Great descriptions of every possible marking on the maps are right here in this floating window. We'll close that for now and look at how we can arrange the docking windows. Each window has a title bar and you can click and drag it to undock it. This is our flight plan window that would list departure, waypoints, and arrival details. Below that is our general information window, so if I double click on the Van Nuys Airport marker on the map, the information window will populate. It shows all of the pertinent information regarding the airport and opens the procedure tab under the search window for us so that we can set our departure or arrival procedures as appropriate. As previously noted, there are some issues with the SIDS and STAR procedures in this version of Little Nav Map that's currently under development. Speaking of the search window, I wanted to demo that real quick. You can put in the ICAO here that it has pre-filled KVNY since I double clicked on that airport on the map. We can clear that out and just search for a name like say, oh, San Gabriel Airport in El Monte and there it is. We double click on that entry in the results list and the map takes us right there. The info window is updated with all of the data as appropriate for that location. Back here at Van Nuys, you can see the search window has different tabs for nav aids, airports that came up in the search results, logbook, etc. In the elevation window, we would see ascent, cruise, and descent information as a graph if we had a plan loaded, but we'll be looking at that in the next video. All of the docked windows can be made to be floating or it can be dragged over the other docked windows like this so that you can rearrange how any of these are docked together. Just drag them over the UI until you see the blue highlight appear that shows you where the window will now become docked. You can also adjust the size of the windows within their docked position by clicking and dragging when the double arrow appears at a window's border. All very flexible options to make the UI as personalized as you like. Well, that's it for this overview of the UI. In the next little nav map video, we'll create a flight plan and go over the most commonly used options for doing that, as well as saving and loading plans. Creating flight plans in little nav map is a ton of fun to do. 
I hope someone found this of use out there. As always, please give the video a like if you got anything out of it, as that really helps the video. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video, and until then, take care.